Hello, join me as we explore text-to-speech processes for making informed decisions. Do you have students who are expected to read and comprehend complex text in the classroom or for homework, but independently are only able to read simple text on their own? Maybe you work with a student who has spent years working on various decoding activities, but still does not have the decoding skills to fluently read. Do you have students that read with excellent accuracy, but their decoding skills are so slow, it limits the amount of reading they can do in the class and how much work they can complete? During classroom or standardized tests, do your students require the test to be read aloud for them to be successful? Do you work with students who are extremely unmotivated to read on their own but are more than happy to listen to a text read aloud to them. We're going to look at the AT process framework for schools created by Dan Cochran. The first thing we need to do is define the problem. And so this is where we're looking at the student's reading ability and what is the barrier preventing them from accessing the curriculum or accessing the text. So as we look at the DODEA Assistive Technology Consideration Guide, we can identify some sample tasks that the student might be struggling with. So now let's frame our discussion for why it is occurring. I encourage teams to consider using this section from the Wisconsin Assistive Technology Assessment Manual. It frames different consideration questions when looking at the student's abilities and difficulties, environmental considerations, and some sensory considerations, helping us discuss and potentially define and hypothesize why the student is struggling so that we then can identify what assistive technology we So as a team, we've identified the problem, reading, decoding, or accessing the text in the classroom. We've brainstormed why we think it is occurring. We've looked at different physical, sensory and environmental considerations. Now we're looking at considering, choosing and trialing and implementing assistive technology. So what are we going to do about it? As you consider text to speech, it's important to know some basic research and findings within the literature. It does work well for some students, but not for everyone. It typically takes multiple sessions for it to be successful and that not all text to speech programs are created equal. Various programs have different abilities to customize the experience for the student, which may impact overall success. Research has shown that text-to-speech can increase vocabulary, increase reading speed, and provide exposure to correct pronunciation. It does need to be used consistently, and it does allow for more room uh, for active memory for constructing meaning, so comprehending text, and it does leave students less fatigued. It is essential to remember that while text-to-speech will remove the decoding barrier from reading selection, the student must still make connections, understand the vocabulary, create mental images in their mind, and make sense of all the text. So now that the team has considered text-to-speech as an option, we're going to move into choosing and trialing. So when you choose and trial assistive technology, maybe you have curricular resources with integrated text-to-speech. In this instance, the text-to-speech is a human reader. Maybe you use something else like Bookshare, where you can use the Read Now function and have integrated text-to-speech, or you use something like Read and Write for Google to provide text-to-speech within that with a computer reader with different highlighted options. Check with your school or district assistive technology point of contact to find out what text-to-speech options you have available to you. Another useful resource is the Bookshare on the Bookshare website. They have the Reading Tool Wizard where you can choose what device you, you want the student to use and it will list specific text-to-speech options. So now we've chosen and we're trialing that assistive technology with that student. And if you remember from the research, it does need to be implemented for at least a semester, typically for uh, 40 minutes a week, if not more. And it needs to be integrated into those general classroom assignments and any type of assessments that the student might be taking. 
but before the student takes any high stake assessments, make sure they've had plenty of time to get used to the text-to-speech intervention so that we're truly measuring what they know and we're not hindering them by ha them having to learn the tool during a high stakes test. A useful resource when implementing assistive technology is this form from the National Assistive Technology Research Institute where it defines who is on the implementation team, the equipment, so whatever text-to-speech tool the team has decided to trial, this is where it is listed. What are the types of tasks that are needed to get the device set up? Who is responsible? Training. As we're looking at implementing assistive technology text-to-speech with the student, does the student need training? Does the paraprofessional, classroom teacher, special ed teacher, family, who is going to provide these trainings? As we're looking at classroom imp implementation, uh, defining those tasks and those IEP goals where that text-to-speech will be implemented and who's responsible. If home implementation is required for the student to access the curriculum, what, uh, what goals are they addressing and what type of tools, who is responsible. And then we're going to spend some more time looking at monitoring and evaluation. So we've considered text-to-speech, considering all the research. We feature match, chosen and trialed some assistive, techno assistive technology text-to-speech. We've been implementing with the help of our implementation plan. And now we're monitoring progress and we're also trying to collect data on is this trial effective. And these are some tools that you might consider when uh, undertaking that investigation. A useful tool is the protocol for accommodations in reading where you measure the student's oral reading, an adult reads to them, and then they hear the text read aloud with a text reader. And what the PAR does is it provides reading samples from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade with a series of comprehension questions, running records to measure how fast the student reads, and it allows kind of a one-stop shop for the student to see how they read independently with human reader, and with text-to-speech so you can compare all three interventions. This is a, a very useful tool because sometimes you'll find the students might be reading with 100% accuracy or near 100% accuracy, but their reading fluency is so slow that that's the identified barrier. Or you might find that they have specific vocabulary weaknesses or ideas or difficulties with inference, main ideas. So it really helps delve into more than just the student struggles with reading, but it identifies what are some of the areas of success and what are some of the areas of need. Maybe the text-to-speech is providing uh, access through decoding for the student, but the student still lacks certain comprehension strategies to access grade level materials, but maybe you'll be able to identify that they independently read at a first grade level, they can comprehend with an adult reader at a third grade level, and with text-to-speech, they're able to access it at a third or fourth grade level. So it really helps you compare the student to themselves using different interventions. Using our existing curricular resources, you can do something similar by having the student read independently. There are different leveled books found on Benchmark Advance. Then they can listen to the computer reader, where it's a recording of a human reading aloud, or the teacher can read it aloud. And then you can also have it read aloud with built-in text-to-speech so that you can then measure do you find a difference in the student's uh, reading level, independent, with a human reader, and with text-to-speech. I will say that many students do prefer uh, the human reader just based off of kind of experience, especially the recorded human reader where they can choose to pause and stop and re-listen to it so they don't have to ask for help. But we really do want to encourage students to develop uh, the ability to use the computer text-to-speech voices because that will open up any digital text to them where if they have to rely on a human reader, even a recorded human reader, that limits the amount of materials that they will have access to. It is very important to remember that we must include the student in this decision-making process. And so as part of that PAR packet to the Protocols for Accommodations and Reading packet, they include this basic Likert scale that I typically use for a lot of uh, questions and answers with students with different technologies. How do they like it? And then more than just giving me a score of one to four, but having them explain what, what did they like, what didn't they like, because sometimes things can be customized or modified 
to better suit that student's preference. Another option that doesn't reinvent the wheel is having the students take tests or complete assignments without any intervention as your baseline and then implementing the text-to-speech program, whatever that looks like, and then having comparing the scores. Do we see an increase in the student's accuracy? Do we see an increase in their speed, the amount of work that's able to complete? What do they report using that Likert scale? Do they indicate uh, a preference for one intervention over the other? Another tool that sometimes is used is uh, SRI. Students will have a baseline SRI score using uh, just independent reading, and then they'll have somebody read it aloud to them, and then they'll have that score cleared out, and then they'll have it read aloud with text-to-speech. And then that gives you three scores to compare again. How do they do independently with a human reader and then with text-to-speech? So we've discussed some various tools to collect that data and compare to be able to determine is this assistive technology solution effective and supporting and fixing this problem. You might find that the assistive technology solution is working, that text-to-speech is working, but as the problem changes, as tasks in the classroom become more complex, as settings change, we might have to revisit this cycle to make slight adjustments so that the student has the tools they need to now address the new task. In closing, I want to remind everyone that if the student needs this assistive technology, if you've gone through this cycle and you have the data supporting that this really allows that student to access these tasks, please ensure that it is added to the IEP under the goals, under the accommodations, but make sure that student has this documented appropriately within the IEP so that no matter where that student transitions to, they have legal access to the features and the tools they need to be able to access their free and appropriate public education.